Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Finally, The Rock has returned to SmackDown. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm Mally Moore. <laughs> I am Dustin Ghost to Hollywood. And I'm Nathan Simmons. And this is a sick fucking joke, but it's not art. It's the Silver Linings <laughs> playlist, where we try to find the silver linings in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Wait, 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 wait. What did you say your name was? Nathan Simmons. <laughs> really? I thought your name was Jathan this whole time. <laughs> J- Jathan? <laughs> where did, wait, what was that again? <laughs> anyway, there's a voice we haven't heard in quite some time joining us on the episode again. I think that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's a, a bag of balls I haven't seen nor heard of in a long time. And that's, of course, the return of Mr. Mally Moore. Actually, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Mally. Hey, I'm here. We're doing it. You're not dead. I'm not dead. No. You got undeaded. Shocking. But I, I feel like he wanted to be uh, after watching this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I'm just assuming Nathan put this as payback for me adding 365 days to the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a lo- we're dealing with a lot of uh, toxic, toxic uh, men and yeah. a lot, a lot of t- interesting uh, subject matter this season. <laughs> well, it's priming us for next season when we're just reviewing episodes of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That, that could really be an alternate title for this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome, everyone. Thanks for either returning or joining us for the first time. I mm-hmm. could not fathom if you joined us for the first time on the episode about the movie The Shape of Things. Sure. But if you did, welcome. As is uh, Jathan. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Nathan so eloquently <laughs> put it. Uh, we are a show. What is Jathan? <laughs> did this Jathan thing originate from one of the three episodes I missed? <laughs> This is a podcast because that, I fucking love it. <laughs> this is a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Mm-hmm. And uh, today's episode was a first time watch for me. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming a first time for you, Mally. This was the first time ever hearing about this fucking movie. <laughs> I was going to say first time last time as well. Uh, so. Yeah. But before we dive too far into it, uh, we're also joined by a returning guest. Yes. Nathan, I'll turn it over to you to do the introduction. Of course. My, uh, oh, that's a scary movie co host and my girlfriend who goes to another school, <laughs> Ashley. Hey. Incredible. So she is real, everybody. She is She's real. real. I came all the way from Canada <laughs> to be here today. <laughs> no, I, no, don't buy it. <laughs> Nathan's got a voice uh, modulator on his end right That's now. That's right. Yeah, this motherfucker's <laughs> pulling a scream. I'm basically Brendan Small playing Victor and Tiny right now. There um, you go. There you go. No, I, I, and there's a very specific reason why I wanted to bring her onto this episode mm-hmm. because Ashley and I. Because you already pre recorded all of her dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, I didn't want it to go to waste. Specifically for this really obscure movie. Right. <laughs> uh, it would be the most Nathan thing uh-huh. that Nathan has ever Nathan. Uh-huh. Possibly. We, this movie is based on a play and we did this play together mm-hmm. back in college. Yeah. Color me surprised that this movie is based on a play. Well, because it's <laughs> shot like a play. Mm-hmm. Wait, is those play photos that you sent us like a year and a half ago was that this oh no that was a different play we did together oh, damn it no no that was that was taking stock which yeah Mally, Mally is made into a series of movie posters <laughs> some of my finest work no we did this play like what in it was like 2006 mm-hmm. 2007 2006 yeah it was a long time ago mm-hmm. oh my god i was a junior in high school mm-hmm. well, that's cute or no wait i was a senior in high school <laughs> Time is a construct. I will say this. If if you've never heard of this movie like we have, don't be surprised because this movie is playing uh, nowhere. Nowhere. You can't find it anywhere. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. You can search for it on Prime. You click on it and it says not available. Yeah. <laughs> no video here. Why is it even fucking there? <laughs> uh, on Roku, you can just search and it'll show you all the different streaming services that it's available on. Mm-hmm. Zero. No results at all. None. Mm-hmm. Absolutely none. Also, speaking of things that why are they there? I just got an update for my flight back to L.A that oh. I took a week ago. <laughs> cool. So, th- th- not relevant. I'm just confused. <laughs> the update of things. <laughs> yeah, so Nathan, mm. uh, aside from this is a play that you and Ashley here performed, yeah. and uh, is there a specific reason why you're choosing this movie now? Hang on, I got questions. Okay. Sure. Nathan. I, I had a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dustin, in fact, was in the middle of one. <laughs> well, what's your question, Mally? Which role did you play, bud? Oh, I was Philip. <laughs> oh, Damn it. boy. 
Oh, boy. I was Evelyn. <laughs> uh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Follow up question. Who's Philip and who's Evelyn? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I, I was, I was the, the mean artist girl. Oh, you fucking bitch. <laughs> and then <laughs> Philip is the guy who's doing his best Randall from Clerks impression boy. the whole movie. Boy. Oh, oh. I love Philip. <laughs> oh, Philip is the worst. Oh. <laughs> It's like uh, Fred Weathers doing like a really bad version of Chris Evans and Fantastic Four mm-hmm. in this. Okay, Philip's really bad, but I don't think we can call him the worst in this movie. No, no, you're right. He's no not. one in this movie is good. No, they're all pretty bad. <laughs> no yeah. one is good. These, I, I wrote down in this about mm, 15 minutes into the movie, I hope all these people get in a speedboating accident. Like, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I, I hated every single character in this movie. And That's of, so specific. By <laughs> the speed of things. <laughs> By everyone, I mean the four characters of this movie. I hated mm-hmm. all of them. They're all awful. Awful people. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, answer my question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Nathan, so sorry. I, so I was, <laughs> I, I can't wait to find out where that came from because I do not remember. Uh, it's probably one of the episodes I was uh, drunk for. Um, basically, when I was- You drink during the recording? Sometimes. How dare you? How dare you? Especially if you're here. <laughs> Hurt. No. Uh, when when I was younger, I really found Neil Butte's work to be interesting and edgy and groundbreaking. But I think it's like the same way that like you know a teenager finds something like Boondock Saints to be edgy and interesting. Oh yes, yes. you know yeah. what I mean. Yes. Like yeah, I, when I, we were in. Oh, sorry, Nathan. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> when we were in theater school, like <laughs> we don't apologize on this show. <laughs> I do. I'm polite. Um, uh, when we were in theater school together. Uh, Neil LeBute and other playwrights like him were like really cool. Yeah. And when we were like 18, 19 years old as freshmen in college, Mm -hmm. like this was like edgy for us. Mm. (laughs) And now I'm just like, this is really dumb. (laughs) So it's like how we all thought Lucky Number Seven was a really good movie back in the day. That is it. That is like the perfect. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. But like as I've gotten older, I, I, I've found. The line between provocateur and edgelord is like <laughs> significantly blurred yeah, or the yeah. same line. It's, it's real bad. <laughs> so like where I once found natural dialogue, I now think it's super stilted and is written in a way that doesn't trust actors to know, you know, when to breathe or pause. Mm-hmm. It, and where I once found interesting arguments about gender roles, I now just see good old fashioned misogyny. Uh-huh. So much. And that's a, that's kind of a recurring thing in LeBute's work where like I used to think his dialogue and his focus on horrible people was interesting, but now I find it very try hardy. Mm-hmm. And I I think it's odd that he consistently puts out films that make zero money and are blasted by critics, but he gets to put out a new one like every two years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll say this: I think this plot would work so well as an Always Sunny episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like flowers for Charlie. Like, yeah, like it's- <laughs> I was gonna say with a cast of fifteen year olds because that's, true. that's how they all fuck an act in this movie or that or that because these characters are so unlikable but yeah. there's no comedy here like right. there's, it's not you're not laughing with them at anything they laugh at you're laughing at them and it's not fun right it's not fun to watch it's that thing where like you know when i, I used to think that his dialogue sounded natural and now it's one of those things where i it, it's it takes on the appearance of naturalism but it's it's overwritten and underwritten at the same time like mm-hmm. no one in a neil labute play can ever say hey are you hungry mm-hmm. they'll say listen i don't know how to say this but i was wondering if you look do you like sandwiches yeah. and the other person will say i mean who's to i mean of course let's be real here we all like sandwiches right. yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. some of that works better on stage than it does on screen sure like i not that i'm sticking up for this play but mm-hmm. i think it does work better on a stage than just watching it in a movie right. if that makes sense well it's like when you're it's like when you're watching a film adaptation of a mammoth play like uh, glengarry glenn ross like notwithstanding some of it just feels wrong like the rhythm doesn't work for film right ah <laughs> uh, yes movies with all male casts <laughs> um <laughs> this motherfucker did the death at a funeral remake yeah. that's right and he should go to hell for that yeah okay, I- I'm, we're bringing up Neil Butte now. I was going to say this: having now seen two of his movies, this <laughs> and then The Wicker Man, mm-hmm. <laughs> the fact that he made this one before Wicker Man kind of angers me because now I'm like, okay, so this movie gets released, mm-hmm. and then he says, you know what, I should do? I should remake one of the greatest folk horror movies of all time because sure. I'm that good. And, and like- <laughs> not only that, but I like it's so funny. I used to have get into debates about whether or not Neil Butte was a misogynist or if he was just like 
ta- doing stories about difficult, you know, human beings uh, mm-hmm. arguing with each other. And oh. like, and no, but it, it is when the Wicker <laughs> oh, Man came out, when the Wicker Man came out, I, I remember thinking, oh, maybe he just really does not like women. Like, yeah. I, like yeah. that movie not only, not only replaces this cult with an island of women, but is the climax of that movie is Nicolas Cage beating the hell out of said women. Yep. Yeah. Just sucker punch women in a bear costume. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> lost interest when I read, I read a couple more of his shows, like Fat Pig, and then Ugh. I got, um, a book of his one acts, and it's all like, here's this normal guy who's kind of has a few flaws and Here's this woman who ruins his life. Ugh. And that's basically the plot of all of it. Or here's a woman who kills her baby as revenge against her the father. You know, yeah. like, like it's it's wild. Yeah. Wait, did he just like did he write a bunch of episodes of SVU? <laughs> <laughs> SVU is uh better than this movie. Oh, oh, way way better. better. Not even in the same league. <laughs> you guys ever see that episode with John Stamos? <laughs> oh my god, that episode is amazing. <laughs> it's terrifying. You see the one where Kyle McLaughlin shoots a kid? That episode is bonkers. <laughs> God damn, I'm going to go watch some Law and Order. <laughs> I double featured this movie with next week's movie, and I'm just like, I get God. it. I fucking get it. Yeah. I get it. And It's exhausting. It, it is exhausting. <laughs> and this movie, there's nothing happening. Uh-huh. Like, there's nothing going on. And I, I, there are movies based on plays that work, sure. but for the most part, they all feel like this. Like- I'm thinking like fences mm-hmm. and stuff like that, where like I I can feel that this is a play. Oh yeah, because we're at three locations and four people are just talking about nothing, just talking to talk. Yeah, and anytime I've seen this play produced, and even when we did it, it's a very in a very intimate setting mm-hmm. where the audience is sort of part of what's going on, yeah. and you lose you definitely lose that in this movie. Yes, yeah. Well, especially when you have to add sets and extras, so you get interesting moments like. Uh, she's gonna l- lick his thigh Ugh. in f- pull in like plain view of an office. I, I, you didn't expect to see Paul Rudd's pubes today. <laughs> not not even that, but the way they frame that shot, it's like he he goes over to the corner in uh-huh. this waiting room, uh-huh. and then you hear zip, and she looks down. I'm like, no fucking way, this dude just took his dick out in this office, and then and then it tilts down, and I'm like, oh okay, it's not that. Bad. Wait, is that? Pu- oh my god, it's pubic hair, and then. Rachel Weisz's tongue is right there. <laughs> and on top of it all, she she says in a pouty manner, I do like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's a lot. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, we got there's so much to talk about with this movie. Didn't but, like that. <laughs> but with, you know, I, I can just imagine there's a ton of people that have never even heard of this movie, such as sure. Mally and myself. What's up? And <laughs> they're they're kind of lost. So let's let's rein it in a little bit and talk about. <laughs> and we've got to describe the plot because they can't watch it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You can't watch this movie anywhere. Sorry. But uh, we'll talk about it. So here we go. Fuck it, DC, drop the link. (laughs) (laughs) Put it in the podcast notes. (laughs) Uh, So The Shape of Things is a movie from 2003. This is a a post-9-11 movie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Can you believe it? Can you even imagine? Uh, The director is Neil Labute. The film stars Paul Rudd, Mm -hmm. Rachel Weisz, Gretchen Moll, and Fred Whaler, and that's fucking it. The budget was- (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) Sorry, every time I hear her name- the the trailer for David Wayne's The Ten like <laughs> lists all the actors in this like weird like Kim Reno, Paul Red, Paul Red, and every time I see her name and that pops in my head. Sorry, <laughs> I, I just think of Boardwalk Empire. Oh sure, the uh, the budget was four million dollars and <laughs> the movie only grossed eight hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars. Where, where where did they spend that four million? I have no uh, cocaine, probably tons of cocaine. How I expensive was that reversible jacket? <laughs> 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 Gotta pay for both sides. Oh, Literally, no. one of my notes is just, "Oh wow, it really is reversible." I think I think a lot of that money went towards Paul Rudd's actual nose job. And he went method <laughs> it, for this movie. It's truly wild. Looking through, like going on a Wikipedia dive through box office for Neil Butte films, and the it's always like budget fifteen to forty million dollars. Box office take sixty thousand. Yeah, oh, yeah, Rotten Tomatoes score thirteen percent. I don't know who he keeps. Like he, he's got dirt on somebody on the other side of the aisle, but I don't know how yeah. he keeps getting it. I don't know how he keeps getting movies. It's wild. He's got a new horror movie that just came out. Oh boy. Well, and he did that American Gigolo show too. Oh, oh yeah, no. that, they promoted the fuck out of that. Oh no. Oh, There's no. still ads for it at the end of my streak. <laughs> 
and the movie has currently, I can't even believe it, 64% on Rotten Tomatoes. Aww. What? I, you can't even flip those numbers and this that would be accurate. Like, I don't know. This is, <laughs> Nathan, I don't want to shit on your, and Ashley, your, uh, you know, your work no. that you've done. <laughs> we didn't write it. Yeah. You're, but you're part of the problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> you're spreading, you're, you're like patient zeros for this. I can't believe you're spreading this it. Is, <laughs> like, it. It is so strange because it is one of those things where when we did this show, we had that feeling of, yeah, we're doing something provocative and edgy. Yeah. And I believe it, yeah. And then, but like, I reread the script this week, and I'm like, there are a couple of really juicy monologues here, but for the most part, I'm just watching a bunch of, I'm hanging out with a bunch of assholes for a few days. <laughs> a bunch of unself-aware assholes. Like, it's- So it's like recording this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> This takes place over 18 weeks. Uh, like this is like <laughs> this is a semester. I don't know how you would know that because there's no there's no transitions, right. there's no there's no title cards like yeah. uh, we'll get into it, but Oh, the Elvis Costello needle drops didn't help you? Oh boy. Oh. How did they get my man I know. to agree to it? Cuz uh, I fucking love Elvis Costello. Me like too. I got a little hype when this year's girl started playing. That's my fucking favorite <laughs> Costello song. How did they get him to agree to this? Let's see if we can answer one of those questions that we had, which is, how did this get made? <laughs> which is, we'll we'll watch the trailer and see how they even marketed this thing. So here we go. I've never seen this trailer. Me either. I hope it looks like a thriller. I can't believe You're Focus cute. Features did this. Yeah. I can't believe it was Focus yeah. Features and Universal a part of this. It kind of blew my mind. <laughs> no, Universal, I buy. <laughs> Like me. Oh my god, I where's the like shape me. of things ride at <gasps> Universal? <Yes. laughs> they just put a mirror up and it's just Rachel Vise just chastising you the whole time over an intercom. They spray paint dicks on you at the end instead of taking your photo. <laughs> yep. They cut your nose off and tattoo you at the end. Oh, you, you get a free tattoo? <laughs> yeah, and they, they give you a free tattoo and they break your nose. So there you go. Love it. If you could alter just one thing about that, the idea of you having some surgery, yeah. it's an experience. What? Oh, no. What was that? But weird lens flares. It looked like you just came and then there was a white flash. Take my call now. Tell me what to do. Anything you want. DC. Give recut this with the the Texas what Chainsaw Massacre. E- <laughs> over each player. Focus features comes a new film by acclaimed director Neil LeBeau. What the fuck is the editing here? <laughs> this feels like it's being marketed as like a Skinamax movie. Uh huh. I recognize who the hell you are. Oh my god. Gretchen Gretchen Mow. Mow. All right. Rachel 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 wow. What a shot for Fred Weller. <laughs> of our obsession with the surface of things. The shape of things. Okay, better movie if it's Fred Willard instead. I, okay, so I didn't know. I just looked at the cast and I thought I read Fred Willard and I was like, what the fuck is he? And then I started watching. I was like, oh, that's it's that guy. Okay. He sees the jacket's gone and he's like, what happened? <laughs> Uh, he like when Paul Rudd is like crying at the end, like watching the thing, and he comes in with his little organ. He's like, "This one's about a sad dog." <laughs> <laughs> Got his head stuck in a stewed tomato. <laughs> Would it be a better movie if Paul Rudd was doing his Halloween Six Vincent Price impression the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it would. Yes, it would. Here's the thing: Paul Rudd is giving the same the shape of things performance in this movie. <laughs> That he did in They Came Together. Uh-huh. It's slash like Wet Hot American Summer. Like he is doing, he's like mugging at the camera. It's wild. But out of all four of them, I don't mind him the most, yeah. honestly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The scene where he crawls over to her in his tidy whities With his little butt in the air? In the bed. Oh my gosh. His little tidy whities Looks Oh my God. like a fucking five-year-old. I mm-hmm. laughed so hard. No, the worst part is when he, uh, Gretchen Mole tickles him at the playground. And then he gets on the little rock, jumps horse on the seat. horse, yes. and looks back at her. What the fuck? What the fuck? The horse scene is the worst. Oh my god! I couldn't tell. I was like, is this meant to be like teenagers? But these guys are like thirty. I was gritting my teeth the whole time. <laughs> like the director was like, act like school children. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they looked at each other and looked away like ninety-seven times. It was. It's so like Priscilla and I were like just giggling like school children watching this because like yeah. the playground scene is so uncomfortable. I was like yep. when they're sitting on the slide and they're just talking about whatever, and I'm just like, do you think there's like someone off camera, like a woman, being like, "Excuse me, uh, my child would like to go down the slide. My, my kid <laughs> wants to play." 
Like <laughs> they're just playfully shoving each other and Yeah, and then they when they're both on the rocking course, I just I want to be like on the fall, like, yeah, please can you come down to the playground? These two are here, they don't have a child, and it's making me uncomfortable. They're just pushing and tickling. <laughs> they keep tickling and jostling each uh, other. <laughs> yeah. Now they're making out. I'm re- I really don't know what's happening, officer. <laughs> you know what you're getting into when this movie starts and No, I fucking didn't. <laughs> well, you you like it, the the credits at the top actor Paul Rudd actress Rachel Weisz like it's such a I've never seen that in my life Nathan I believe it's actor Actor? (laughs) would it be better if it said the players (laughs) (laughs) under the cherry moon style (laughs) this Uh, movie needed uh, 50% more prints (laughs) prints in the Paul Rudd role (laughs) I just yeah I just would have liked just any self-awareness in these characters but they're not like it's the, my first note is this girl's an asshole, like yeah. immediately. Yeah, <laughs> she's entitled. Yeah. She's rolling her eyes, talking down to him for no reason. My first note is, I fucking hate art students. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this is this is like per- the personification of everything that is wrong with art students. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's all encompassing of just like, there's one big thing that I did not like about this character, aside from many other things, but the big <laughs> thing is she's like, I don't like things that are fake. Yeah. And there's this leaf over the statue. Meanwhile, I'm totally okay with, with plastic surgery. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what? I've never met an art student that I didn't think was a pretentious cunt. Yes. Oh, gosh. Yes. And, and I dated one for five years. Sure. And, and we kind of <laughs> technically are ones. Yes. We're, oh, we're also am. cunts. So. Yeah, all, all of us. Yeah. Uh, fuck you, bro. Bachelors of science. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Our, our degrees do say science, not art. <laughs> what up? Well, I just... I think I, I, uh, I think the thing with Evelyn is if you you can you can't uh, you can't disagree with her right like that's when she jumps on the defensive immediately. Oh, okay. I thought you were mean like just in general. I was like, oh, I disagree with her a hundred percent. But I think <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you're as saying. an audience member, sure. But anyone in the realm of the movie, sure, you, know, you sure, can't. Sure. No, as, yeah, as a character, yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, Ashley, Ashley with the hot takes. This could be an interesting episode. <laughs> <laughs> I am Evelyn. You cannot disagree with her. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but she also positions herself as this intellectual who throughout the movie. It's clear she doesn't read books. Yeah, like she she gets no literary references. She only knows pop culture. Mm-hmm. Yes, she is definitely someone that would just read a headline and think she got the full con- content of the article. No, she's Tony Collette's character from Knives Out. Sure. Oh she's yeah. Like, oh, I read a tweet about an article of you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> and but- we're we're laying on the symbolism so thick immediately. Their names are Adam and Evelyn. Uh-huh. She's wearing a shirt with an apple on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yep. there's a statue of God. Like, <laughs> come on, what are what are we doing? I just, uh, it's so bland. Yes. Like this movie, the the camera work isn't interesting. The performances aren't interesting, and it's just people just talking, just talking. <laughs> they're all performing like they're in a black box theater. Like yeah. they are. These are broad performances. Everybody's gesticulating wildly and shaking their heads. Every shot is framed like a play. I mm-hmm. mean, people come in. It's like that that common complaint about the room where people come in and announce themselves as they make an entrance from stage left. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, if I didn't know this was based on a play, I would immediately be able to tell just because it's so stilted. Like sure. everything is boring. Like just their conversations, it's like they're waiting for applause breaks or like <laughs> laughter. And sure. I don't know. I just like I, Paul Rudd seems to be maybe the only one with any kind of self-awareness about this, but like Mm -hmm. Rachel Weisz is going for it. Like, I don't know. See, I find her to be so subdued this entire movie uh, up until there's maybe a couple of moments where I feel like I'm seeing some kind of energy there, but I I just feel like she's underplaying so much of this. I don't know. I, the first, I watched this, the first, this is my second watch, second time watching it. I watched it like a week after we closed the show in college Mm -hmm. and I hated her performance. (laughs) And this time I watched, you were just like, I did it better. (laughs) It's so hard. Like when you don't have that distance, right? Right, Yeah. Yeah. And then watching it this time, I was like, I don't know. I I knew so many girls like that in college. And sometimes I I was that girl on bad days. And I don't know. I think, (laughs) I I think fucking she, knew it. <laughs> I think she captures that art school girl very well. I I think she captures the time period very well. Yeah, like this is totally. 2003. Well, the early 2000s were a confusing time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like it. I mean, there is kind of that like edgy kind of anger of of a post 9 11 world. Mm-hmm. Like we're very and the f- <laughs> the fashion is awful and everything's. <laughs> big and bold and it's just like I'm mad at the world. Well, but that jacket was reversible, yeah, Dustin. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And also like everybody's 
extra pithy. Like yep. like I was saying earlier, like Paul Rudd can't just ask why. Mm-hmm. He has to say, and would why be completely out of the question? Yep. <laughs> like yep. ev- everything has to be prolonged. Yeah, nobody is just talking straight. They're just talking in circles about nothing. Like mm-hmm. nothing. I just I, there's nothing I could latch onto, which is is the worst kind of movie because uh-huh. like I'm not, I can't get down with the performances. I can't get down with the dialogue. I can't get down with the camera work. There's nothing. What? Are you in 2003 with by saying, <laughs> oh, I can't get down with this. I'm down with that. The, the fuck? Yeah, I'm trying to put myself in the in the movie. I'm the fifth cast member. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but like this, the first scene, like at, at the at the museum mm-hmm. and then they, when they cut to the the, the college courtyard mm-hmm. I'm, I thought I missed something because he's like uh, she goes you don't know anything about me I know you're from Illinois and I'm like wait what? when did she say that and I rewound it I'm like oh she didn't this is just a bad movie <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're, this is just apparently sometime later yep. yeah. that scene feels like an SNL sketch oh my god out. like the way it's like framed it, it, yeah it seems like a joke uh-huh. like, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> when I realized that like we weren't going to many mm. places like we weren't going to mini yeah and i i just was like oh i'm in this for the long haul of like we're going to three locations it's these four people and that's the end of it <laughs> yeah i was like god i was counting the minutes i was like this the is full four yeah <laughs> okay so let's let's broadly describe the plot so okay. uh, i think i fucking nailed it last night <laughs> uh-huh. in the group chat when uh-huh. i was just guessing what the plot was yeah you, that's what i'm saying you weren't far off you were not far off fucking but nailed it <laughs> so paul rudd works at this museum he's just kind Kind of security. Kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, what is his job? I don't know. He's the, hey, hey stand hey. back guy. Uh, That's all it is. Statue defender. <laughs> Statue defender. <laughs> but he like, he doesn't have like a badge or anything. World's worst superhero. The way he gets introduced, I didn't even know he worked for the museum. Because mm-hmm. he doesn't have a badge, not a jacket or anything. He's he has like, his jacket. But, but it's, it's his, his jacket. It's his that jacket. He mm-hmm. spray paints three numbers on and says, call me. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh, like, did she just spray paint 911? She only put three numbers there. What the fuck did she spray paint? Yeah. And Paul Rudd it gets introduced as the most swaggerless guy ever. Mm-hmm. Says he wants to, he likes her, would like to go out with her. Why don't we get a date? Why don't we get a date? <laughs> and the whole movie is, Rachel Vise is like, yeah, like you, like you mentioned, like the pretentious art student mm-hmm. that wants to change him. And she does change him. It causes a rift between him and his friends. And by the end of it, I, I guess, do we reveal the ending now or do we save it? Like, Why don't we go ahead? Okay. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, cut, so. let's cut this episode short. Let's <laughs> <make it> short. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as he changes and becomes more confident, things start to get weird in their relationship. He he cheats on her with uh, his one of his friends from college. The only other woman in the movie? His, his <laughs> best friend's fiance. His best friend's fiance. Uh And then it is revealed that Evelyn has been treating him as a human sculpture, Mm -hmm. changing him, molding him into her ideal human being or into something new just so she can put him on display as a thesis project. Mm hmm. Uh yeah, <laughs> and she feels zero remorse for it, and that's the end of the movie. And yeah, she she <laughs> explains her process as though it's normal. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I do not regret it at all. Yeah, this this I guess, I guess could probably work as a play, mm-hmm. or maybe even like a limited run TV series if there was more to it. Like, there's got to be more characters. There's got to be more going on. There's there are no subplots. I will say, <laughs> like when we did this show, and when you watch this show with an audience who has not seen, it, like if you watch it uh, as a play. With an audience who's not aware of the plot, mm-hmm. there are all there were always audible gasps oh my at the reveal. What mm-hmm. the audience was so in it every time that we did the performance, like they were involved. There was one one performance where someone put their hand on Adam's shoulder. That was my ex boyfriend, and oh I wanted to punch him in the face. I'm like, <laughs> why are you touching actors? We broke up soon after. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Really oh. talking up your own. Per- performances here <laughs> no i'm saying the i'm saying the work i think it does maybe play better as a stage production but it yeah as a film it, it, it just so flat sure sure the scene where it's revealed that she was filming them having sex uh-huh. did you nail that scene <laughs> <laughs> every night that got a huge because like, the audience didn't like realize there was a camera in the scene mm-hmm. right away until i said hey were you okay with that and there was an audible gasp 
every single night. <laughs> they do that in the movie. They're yeah. like, yeah. It, it's a cutaway. <laughs> it's a good reveal in the movie too. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I think it, it might work better as a play than a movie. I don't know. You might be right. But the, the thing about the movie is because there are no side plots, mm-hmm. there are no side characters. Sure. Right. Of course her thesis project is about this guy. Like there's nothing else it could be. <laughs> right. No one else exists. Yeah. It's Chekhov's <laughs> art project. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a sculpture thingy. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, there's, there's not a lot to it. it yet they they managed to get a full feature length movie out of it which is shocking because like i said this movie looks cheap it feels cheap mm-hmm. you go to like three different places and it's just these four characters and i don't know i just i i feel like the world isn't realized right. like no, it's it's not a movie it's a movie thingy it's, yeah it's not a movie let's go ahead and tell you this is not a movie when we cut to the house party and, and which is still just the four of them hanging out and i'm trying to figure out is this immediately after the play they all saw together or is this another hangout i was gonna say you're using the word party very loosely here it's yeah. like it's like when you go to a restaurant and they refer to your dining group as a party like this <laughs> it's not a party <laughs> that's how nathan parties <laughs> that is how i party it's true but like I don't know. The uh, the performances are just so bad. Yeah. Rachel Weisz is like, again, if there was even a, a moment of like self-awareness to this character that, or like you said, that wasn't pithy or like yeah. pretentious, but they're, I, I keep, I feel like I keep saying the same things over and over, but like <laughs> they're not doing anything. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. It's frustrating. And when there are interesting moments in the movie, it, it seems to come from when they remember we're filming this, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's not... It, 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 because these these are very br- like you're saying very broad theatrical performances mm-hmm. and then when it's interesting is when you have these little quiet moments like when Evelyn finds out that Adam used to have a thing for Jenny there's a, there's a moment where she's kind of like analyzing him you yeah. can see her eyes darting back and forth mm-hmm. or the like like you said the cut to the camera or you know there every once in a while there are these moments where it's like Neil Abute remembered oh yeah I don't have to just set up the fucking tripod and film the play yeah you can actually move the camera, Neil. Oh, uh, like the scene <laughs> where Paul Rudd's just smiling at the camera. <laughs> oh my yes. god! Oh, oh my god! Haunting. I can't. I can't. I can't fucking look at Paul Rudd smiling the same ever again. Yeah, like, it's that really is uncomfortable. Burned into my fucking brain, and I hate you, Nathan, for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> How could you ruin Paul Rudd for me? Well, the most frustrating part is like I know these people can act. Yeah, like, right. I've seen Rachel Weisz act. I've yeah. seen Paul Rudd act, but these are this is not acting. This is just reading the lines basically and it's Mm -hmm. like they're trying to make it work but it just doesn't like there's not enough on the page here to make this a full movie Mm -hmm. to make these characters real they're so one-dimensional it's it's kind of surprising and paul rudd is kind of the most least developed Uh because like i don't know what he wants other than to please rachel vise like i don't know what his ambitions are like he says he's got three jobs at one point and i'm like well what are the other two like i (laughs) I must have missed something one's at the video store idiot apparently apparently so the video store i would like to see that i would like to see him working at the video store i don't know why i remembered that (laughs) well they talk about him like oh he never wants to get married blah 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 blah. but like that never comes out in his personality whatsoever However. But why? <laughs> yeah. Why would he? He seems like the kind of t- total guy that would love to be married. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Like, motherfucker's favorite holiday is cuffing season. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't help that he only has one friend. <laughs> and Does he look like he would have a lot of friends, though, to be honest? But his his one friend who apparently was his roommate freshman year. So it's like, friends. did you have friends before? No, he says we've known we've known each other since we were kids, right? Yeah. Okay. But like, he, they seem like complete opposites. Yes. Why are they friends? Right. I know. Philip treats him like shit. Uh, Nathan, you should know that. You played him in the play. I should have. <laughs> God. Did you do no character research? <laughs> <laughs> Fred, but Fred Weller, like, doesn't have a moment in this movie where he's not full jock bro like it's i don't know why they would be friends like douche douche chills the whole movie i don't know no no character no character in this movie is likable and gretchen mole could have been Mm -hmm. but like then she she cheats on her fiance with paul rudd and then like Mm -hmm. i don't know and like pushes for it god in her defense she cheats on fucking philip (laughs) yeah Philip, who at one point, like, I don't know, he reminded me of something I could not put my finger on when he's in that black turtleneck. I'm like, this guy looks like somebody 
I can't think of who it is, but it was Edward the- Norton's character in Glass Onion. Oh, a little bit, a little bit. He does, but you're, you're like you're right, Ashley. Like she pushes for this this sequence in which like they they make out next to the beach, and she says no. Like we, without saying it, she essentially says no. We should go fuck on the beach right now in Ugh. broad daylight. Exactly. Yeah, she's like, no, let's do it. And it's a and that's a that's way more ambiguous in the script. Yeah. Like it's they kind of walk off together, and it's implied that more happens. But like this movie straight up says like no they continued <laughs> but like the first kiss that they have uh-huh. the <laughs> most awkward thing of all time it's the worst thing I've seen all of the kissing in this movie is horrible <laughs> I would I would rather watch all the sex scenes from the room back to back than watch this again <laughs> I've never seen Nathan kiss uh-huh. but I think I feel like I have I mean you're not wrong what- I doubt it <laughs> my-, <laughs> my my favorite example of that is when the the aforementioned scene where Evelyn tells him to stare into the smile into the camera for as long as you can and no. I'm like is the blowjob gonna get scary <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> 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 Is she gonna look up with a leprechaun mask on? Like, what's happening? Spooky blowjob. Nothing better than a scary blowjob. Just so you know, it's my favorite. Sounds threatening. I only get it once a year as a married man. But you know, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, no, for, no, no, no further questions. That's we're leaving it there. Let's talk about the scariest thing in this movie: the bamboo forest wallpaper in this fucking apartment. <laughs> they got. Oh, I know, right? This apartment. What the fuck? It's awful. Bamboo wallpaper, orange paint. Oh, wait. It, also, how? they afford in that motherfucking place sure yeah like i understand it was 2003 uh-huh. but like damn <laughs> it helps when you're in college but you're also 37 years old you've already <laughs> made a life at this point like these people are so old and they're supposed to be playing like tw- i'm guessing like 21 22 right it's awful yeah, no you you could cast 30 year olds as teenagers in the 80s you can't do it in 2003 no. not in 2003 no evelyn's no. living in like fucking kevin McAllister's house like it's <laughs> this huge expansive place for an art student yeah that's a trope we've never Never gotten over which is the the person who clearly doesn't make that much money but has the giant apartment <laughs> joey tribbiani out of work actor <laughs> palatial mansion yep <laughs> evelyn living in the mansion i believe because she's an art student which means she has rich fucking parents oh, oh okay. sure this girl definitely has rich parents yeah. without question yeah pretentious cunts <laughs> All of them. Oh. <laughs> I just say, Ashley, oh. oh. <laughs> the part that's just so uninteresting, though, is because everyone is just, because it's based on a play, everyone's just talking and no one's doing anything. Like, we're not seeing anything they're talking about. Mm-hmm. It would be nice to see, and maybe it's just a lie, but it would be nice to see Rachel Weisz going over to Fred Weller and kissing him. Right. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, just so we have something to latch on to because I don't know, there's just nothing happening. And well, it's- and a lot of like play adaptations will do that, right? Like yeah. they'll throw in that connective tissue, mm-hmm. but this is literally like, well, we can't do that because like he forgets that he doesn't have to be on one set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, cut away. I, it, it, these feel like sets. I mm-hmm. can feel the flyaway walls like ready to, to pounce. Like I'm expecting the like the lights to dim on the in the movie and then they pop up in a new set like i'm expecting that <laughs> yeah it's it's terrible that when they're at the playground though then i feel like there's so much i want to talk about with the playground scene please oh. so so he's had his uh, does it begin with lovely why don't you just call me yep. gay and get it over with yes. oh god <laughs> the most insane line of dialogue in a movie full of it, it just I, I what a what a way to compliment somebody you're lovely oh, lovely <laughs> i guess i'd like suck a dick oh, yeah that's essentially his reaction yeah. what the fuck <laughs> But then they have their their first. Ki- I feel like we're all over the place, and the audience is probably not keeping up. So let's explain. So Rachel Weisz and uh, Paul Rudd get together. Mm-hmm. She starts changing little things about him. Hey, why don't you get a haircut? Why don't you try on this shirt? Mm-hmm. Why don't you get a get a nose job, mm-hmm. which we'll talk about later. He's losing weight. Get this dope ass reversible jacket. Mm-hmm. I'm not letting that jacket go. <laughs> Puts contact lenses in. Get better at. Ki- I do. I do like the subtlety of him getting better at kissing as it goes on. Yeah. Because when it first starts, he's terrified of it. Uh-huh. And he's like open mouth smashing his face uh, against hers like he's uh, Roger Moore in The Spy Who Loved Me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she's trying to, Rachel Weisz is trying to drive a wedge between him and his friends, uh-huh. uh, Fred Weller and Met- Gretchen Mull, who are engaged. And I think technically she's trying to fuck a wedge in between them. Well, she is. So after Paul Rose had this transformation, mm-hmm. he goes to meet with Gretchen Mall. They meet at the playground. And they're just discussing whatever. She's like, oh, you look different now. Did you get uh, context? Yep, I got context. We got a nice haircut. And she-, and she keeps saying like, oh, you're cute. Oh, you're hot. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't even know how hot you are. Well, she's yeah. like, when did you get so 
so cute. Yeah. And she, then she kisses him on the cheek. Right. Yeah. Wait. In the play, do they meet at a playground? They meet at the beach. Oh, it's at the beach. They're already at the beach. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. at like a picnic table up by the beach. Okay. Yeah, like I'm like I'm in my thirties. If one of my friends texts me saying, Hey, meet me at the playground, <laughs> I'm gonna go fuck it. No. I'm reporting you to the police right away. <laughs> no. Just immediately. I'm no. Calling the neighborhood watch. <laughs> But like she she kisses him mm-hmm. and then they finish kissing and he is the oh my god it's the cringiest fucking thing of all time he just like gives like a little giggle and he's like uh, what was that <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst I threw up in my mouth I'm like what the fuck is happening in this movie this is the scariest movie I've seen all year like uh-huh. it's, I hate this scene I, I hate, hate this it scene so much she te- like we were trying not to talk about the movie before the recording but she texted me I hate Adam and Jenny's scene so much yeah. They're acting like children, yes. and it's so weird. It's so weird. They like touch toes. <laughs> like he like they like kick each other. They sh- jostle each other. She tickles him twice. She like shoves him. He jumps on a little horse and like looks back at her. Like mm, you gonna get on too? Like I, I would not have been surprised if he started like swinging on the monkey bars. Right. Like I would not, or like going down the slide. Like I don't know. It's just shoving her face in the sand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ease, ease up on monkey bars. All right, those are fun. I don't know. I just this and this scene was where I wrote down. How does Neil Butte keep getting work? Like I don't, I don't know. I, I wanted, I wanted to throw up legitimately from the secondhand embarrassment. It's awful. That was the scene of the movie where I checked to see how much fucking more of the movie was left. Uh-huh. I bet and that's the I halfway bet. point, and was immediately pissed. Uh, yeah, I, and I just wrote down in all caps, Adam, you fool! You're kissing your friend's fiance. Like there, there should be some tension here, and there's nothing because just like. Well, that happened, and then let's keep going on with the movie. Then he, he goes on to meet with Philip, and he's like, I'm so glad I have you as my best friend, and I love Evelyn so much. Uh-huh. uh-huh. You betrayed me. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Nathan's Paul Rudd impression is just Paul Rudd from Halloween 6. Well, it, was, it was supposed to be Tommy Wiseau, Wiseau, yeah. but, Well, I'll yeah. take it. Put Tommy Wiseau into Halloween 6. Oh, <gasps> better movie. Better oh. movie. <laughs> So they go to the doctor's office, mm-hmm. a plastic surgeon. I don't know where they get the money for plastic surgery, but whatever. Sure. Rich parents. And he gets his quote unquote nose job. His nose looks exactly the same when it's done. Didn't even bother. It's a little bulbous. Like they Is put it? like a they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They oh. put like a little white. They widened it a tiny bit. I couldn't tell with the standard definition DVD we were watching. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you don't notice until there's like a shot in the hot in like in the waiting room where he turns to the camera, and Got I was it. like, his nose is bigger. Like Got it's just it. in that one shot I got it like. okay well Mally pointed out something uh where i, I did <laughs> at the beginning of the movie paul rudd looks very much like neil labute oh <laughs> yeah okay okay Pulled a christopher nolan <laughs> <laughs> i i feel like he looks like dana carvey in the turtle club from yeah. master of disguise yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, there is a scene when he stands up during the house party <laughs> He's got this long shirt. It's so long. It elongates his bot. He looks like the kid from Final Destination 2. Yeah. Right before yep. he gets smoked. Yep. Jesus Christ. Yep. It is. It's it's baffling. It's awful. You're trying to convince me that Paul Rudd isn't like a, a total cutie pie. I know, right? Well, okay. And not to defend this movie, <laughs> but I think he was wearing the big shirt to show that he was losing weight. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. That's absolutely what it is. Okay. But it looks cartoonish. <laughs> How dare you bring logic into this? <laughs> see, that could have been a scene though, right? Like Because they mentioned that she's a vegan or a vegetarian. And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, when they go to the playground and he meets with Gretchen Mullen, he's like, oh, I lost weight. I'm like... Oh, because it's the new diet you're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a new diet. Well, why can't I just see a scene like that? Just some kind of levity in the movie. Like, yeah. maybe it's his first time. Like a workout montage? Not oh, even a montage. It could just be one scene of like, hey, I made this food. Why don't you try it? Yeah, it's good. What, anything. Uh, uh, you know, movies Movies have scenes in them. I want to see a Rocky style montage of like Adam <laughs> getting in shape. I'd be fine with that too. <laughs> but it's just him eating cauliflower and carrots. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be fine with any of that because you know what that would be? That would be a movie where scenes occur and things <laughs> Where happen. there's progression. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I don't know, man. Like they, he goes to to f- meet with Fred Weller mm-hmm. after he gets his quote unquote nose job, and he's like, "Oh, I fell." And he goes, oh, "What are you, a battered housewife or whatever?" He says, uh, and it's then a bold line. I'm just like, "Can you guys just kiss already?" Because the <laughs> sexual chemistry between these two is out of control, more so <laughs> than Rachel Vi. Rampant. It's diffused by Phil having the most puzzling reaction to eating a banana I've ever seen outside of like Ron Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Tra- I don't know. But I'm like, they got to fight or kiss or something. There's mm-hmm. going to be something right. going on here. And there's not. Yeah, they rest. They, they wrestle. Yeah. They do. They get the, They get in a little tussle. No, I wouldn't even call that a fight. 
He gives him a noogie, basically. That's it. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? That's, that scene has what I consider to be the big reveal of the movie, mm. which is that that jacket's fucking reversible. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. The reversible jacket, yeah. <laughs> then he says, lay off and go to class. Like, Motherfucker, y'all are like 30. I know. Yeah. Get I know. the fuck out of here. Phil but Phil confronts him. He's like, I know you I know you kissed Jenny. They have this big uh, little argument where he's like, okay, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I you know, was pushing Jenny whoa, away. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. I don't, he, he doesn't know that he kissed Jenny right yeah. or oh no that's the next scene that's yeah. the next thing i'm thinking of never mind keep going and so he but they they he's basically like look it's all good beef over and then what sets off the fight is the jacket mm-hmm. yeah is that is that paul rudd got rid of his old jacket <laughs> he's jealous it's reversible nathan <laughs> he's trying to rob him he wants to take that jacket for himself the haves and have nots yeah. <laughs> the way paul rudd jumps on his bike oh my god oh my god (laughs) one of the funniest things i've ever seen in my life looks painful it looked like it hurt so bad he pulled a mr uh mr belvedere you think when he got on that bike seat (laughs) see my question was if he donated this jacket did he get rid of her phone number on the inside first yeah what an asshole i I fucking hate a rachel vice's character in this movie i know it's supposed to but god and we kind of glossed over it, but we already talked about it yet. She, he shows, he got a tattoo of her initials. Oh, right. Eat. Right next to his crotch. Uh-huh. You get to see some Paul Rudd pubes. Oh, pretty that cool. Is one of my fa- <laughs> that is one of my favorite moments in the movie is that like Gretchen Maul plays realizing what Evelyn's initials are like it's a revelation. Yeah. Like it's supposed to mean something. Yeah. But it's also like, th- like this woman is stupid. You shouldn't date her. Yeah. She goes like, eat. <laughs> like that's basically <laughs> I what thought it, it was going to be like a Tom Riddle thing. Like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way they treat it T yeah I don't know and then they they have this uh, Gretchen Mull and uh, Rachel Weisz have this conversation where they're talking about the kiss mm-hmm. and Gretchen Mull thinks she's talking about the kiss she had with Paul Rudd but then Rachel Weisz reveals no I kissed your fiance Fred Weller and I gave him a blowjob well but did she that's, that's the whole a great point. question like, that'd be a movie <laughs> if we found out about those things well she also says decaf isn't coffee so I don't I don't trust anything this person says God, it's the worst kind of person it's the worst kind of person she it's cannot a- be wrong I think she was lying you think she's lying about the blowjob I think she is too I think she is too. I think she's lying about the kiss okay. oh I don't know if she's lying about the blowjob but I think she's lying about the decaf coffee oh, <laughs> oh sure <laughs> no that's definitely when one of the times where he almost catches her in a lie yeah, yeah. uh-huh and she's gotta like make up something yeah i gotta say my biggest takeaway from that whole scene was that i want a fucking joan soda oh, I, was just about to I, say. Made a, I made a note about that i'm like oh my god joan soda yes i said i wrote down I was like the best part of this movie that, man that shit took me back yeah. yeah and she called it a juice she I know. It a juice. she's like i got you a juice I'm like that's not a juice bitch what an asshole that was the best part of the movie mm-hmm. i saw that joan soda and my eyes lit up <laughs> my juice <laughs> we used to lie to our parents and say it was juice That's yeah. right. it's the best it's the best soda jones cream soda is the best uh, it is so good yes yeah evelyn tries to play off this whole thing by making it again adam's fault by being like do you think i wanted to kiss that guy yeah. she's like right. i only did it to make a point you made me do it yeah uh, i just i i could i, I Kept finding new ways to write down this person as the worst person of all time. Like it's, <laughs> but so is Adam. Like he, like uh, the the second he becomes one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess. I, I, I guess we're kind of here at the end already, but uh, a listener, if you've never seen the movie, you didn't miss much because mm-hmm. that's the movie. It's this girl using this guy as an, as her art thesis project. Uh-huh. And it's, there could be so much more to do, but they don't. And they stick to these four people. Mm-hmm. There's barely like a conflict between them and it gets resolved. Even when we did the show, I could not for the life of me understand why in the world Phil and Jenny would go to the gallery opening. Yeah. All of them are at the art show yes yeah. that's my note too like why are they all here they all hate each other like- right. that would have been a good moment too of like oh we all came well this is <laughs> awkward let's discuss it or anything we all came we all came uh, you yeah, know and uh it's been <laughs> oh my <laughs> fucking jesus fred weller's best uh moment of acting in this movie actually is when paul rudd just starts to go into the gallery because he's promised he's not going to talk to jenny or phil anymore and philip goes 
well, hold up. Where's the fire? Like he looks genuinely hurt and confused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a nice moment for this character that has just kind of been this unfeeling douchebag the whole time. You know, you know what Fred Weller's performance is like? What's that? It's like you took Andy Samberg out of Hot Rod and made, <laughs> made him this character. Because that's that's kind of the energy he's bringing in this movie. You want to like, join my crew? Yeah. That's basically <laughs> the performance he's giving. It's wild. Um. All right. Well, we're here at the end of the movie. Nathan, do you want to recap the ending? Sure. So, uh, Evelyn takes the stage to reveal her thesis project, and uh, as mentioned before, she tells the audience, I have been manipulating him. Uh, I've never exactly told him, you have to do this, but I have sculpted him into a, a new person as he's gotten more confident and more secure and handsomer his actions become more and more questionable mm-hmm. she she basically airs everyone's dirty laundry uh in the middle of this argument and or in the middle of this uh gallery opening mm-hmm. and humiliates him yeah she reveals that he proposed to her which is another scene that would have been really interesting to see yeah. i know i thought i missed it i thought i fell asleep for a bit but <laughs> apparently not didn't miss anything at all she takes the ring off and puts that on display in the gallery and in one of my favorite moments he goes backstage or he goes to the gallery and it you know there's no one there because everyone thinks she's the worst yeah, yeah. and Like, she seems to think she's making a point. And the reveal of her eating a cookie by herself just makes me laugh every single time. (laughs) But, yeah, he basically asks her, was anything you told me ever true? And she says, there was one thing. The night that we were in bed together, I whispered something in your ear. That was true. And then she leaves, and that's it. Yeah. We don't find out what it is she said. And honestly... I don't think Neil Labute even knows what she said. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a MacGuff. I like- will say the original version of the script, which changed when the film came out, the, mm-hmm. the original version of the play ends with her saying, you know, I, I that night we were laying in bed together. That was true. And so he sits in, in, I, in a scene that I think is actually really well done. He sits down and starts playing the tapes of that night because those are at the gallery. Mm-hmm. And he leans in close. He can't hear what she's saying. And he keeps rewinding it and playing it again and again as the lights fade out. Mm-hmm. I think that's really nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I think yeah. That's- yeah, but that's not how the movie plays it. Right. No. The movie plays it like he's rewatching the video like, oh, man, I miss, I'm going to miss having sex with that <laughs> pixie girl. Like, right. It's it's real bad. It's a real bad movie. <laughs> yes. Um there's a couple of things I wanted to hit on that you that you uh, you kind of glossed over in this recap. Please. So they all go to this this her art gallery presentation the the, the reveal of her thesis project. Mm-hmm. She talks about her her professor, her art mentor whatever, never find out who that is, never see that <laughs> sure. character. That would have been again, would have been great to have a scene in a movie um, where things are happening. But, but also like when you're doing a thesis, don't you have to like check like do progress reports and stuff? Don't you have to you check have to get in approval. occasionally? You owe that too. Right, they have to be approved. Yeah. They have to be approved by your professor. Yeah. No art professor worth his fucking salt in his degree would be able would approve this. No. Right. One thing that Paul Rudd says later on when at the end, he goes, I should sue your ass. And I'm like, A, for what? I mean, I get <laughs> yeah. you angry, but what are you going to sue her for? But B, I'm like, he makes, he says one thing mm-hmm. and I'm just like, this is accurate. And he says, do not fool yourself into thinking this is art. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that. bingo. Yeah. yeah. It's not art. Yeah. There's also a line missing from the script, from the play script that sort of brings a whole bunch of stuff back back around like it, it kind of closes the door on some of the runners through the script like there's a bit where when he he makes a reference to um metamorphosis right mm-hmm. he's like I, I feel like gregor samsa right now and she says i don't understand that reference mm-hmm. and in the play he goes it doesn't matter i do yeah like, he sort of like takes that back and he's like look you're not as fucking smart as you think you are yeah and i i miss that i want that in this i want i want some kind of catharsis yeah. even though all of these people are terrible well so she gives her her presentation and she's like, I'm about to present my art thesis. Before I do, I'm here with this guy. He proposed to me a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. He, she shows the ring. He, she says, I never answered you, but I promise you by the end of this. You'll have your answer. You'll have your answer. Yeah. And then she goes on to say, you know, I took this guy. I uh, shaped him without ever forcing him to do anything. I only coerced him mm-hmm. oftentimes through a sexual nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gretchen Mole storms out. Peter Well, uh, Peter Weller, <laughs> Fred Weller storms out. <laughs> You're under arrest. <laughs> and the whole time, I'm like, why has Paul Rudd not just fucking walked out? Yeah. Sure. I was shocked it took him as long as he did. But basically... She's she's like, um, you know, I I changed his diet. I, I, he got a haircut. He mm-hmm. had plastic surgery. 
uh, I did all this without forcing him. She goes, and I feel no remorse for this. She yep. gives the audience the double birds. Looks directly into the camera and whispers, fuck you. Yeah, it's, it's so, so bad. It's so try hardy. I mean, if this movie needed anything, it was a fourth wall burn. <laughs> it's so it's so stupid and, un- and cringe. Mm-hmm. Like This character would be... In 2023, the most obnoxious Twitter user of all time. No, this is the this is that author that faked her death. There Maven. you go. Like, same same energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> have you guys heard about this? I have heard about this. Wait, yeah. What? There was a romance author who faked her own death, and now she's basically being like, "Well, it's on you if you got your feelings hurt. If you believed it, then that's your fault." Yeah. <laughs> Bold. Her Tumblr would have been borderline unreadable <laughs> if, if Rachel Weisz had one. But like the part that I thought this, I thought we were going to get something here at the end mm-hmm. where. He confronts her. I thought she was going to be like, you know, he would just break it down for her and then she would just realize, oh, I've been a terrible person. And I do think she plays that a little bit of ambiguity here because she does seem like there are a couple of moments where I almost feel like she she looks like she feels guilty, even though that's not what she's saying. But I don't know. Maybe that's just me hoping someone in this is a human. I don't think so. I feel like when she's like, when he's like, why did you buy this? Why did you go buy this coat? Because she's got the coat from Goodwill. Mm -hmm. And she says, so I could have all of you. And my first like reading of, of the script, and I think even when we performed it, I took that as her sort of maybe actually feeling some remorse Mm. but i think i think her feelings are strictly the way like an artist feels about a project they've worked really hard on for Uh a long time yeah does that make sense being a completionist like she's cataloging it i think well not not just that no i think she has affection for the project itself Mm. not Not for for him him. yeah but like for the concept and the idea and the result yeah if that makes sense he's like can i have the ring back at least because it was my grandma's so it's so (laughs) fuck it like this character is one of the most vile people in a movie we've covered on the show. Yeah. Like it's so, <laughs> yeah. it's so bad. And like, I want one moment. I, I disagree, Nathan. I don't think she feels remorse at all. Like, no, I, I don't think I, she does either. I think Rachel Weiss is trying to play some ambiguity there, but I don't know. I don't know that it's sold at all. It's no, I see. I don't think the character is like, no, I genuinely did like you. Mm-hmm. I don't think she feels at all. I think she's like, Look, man, you're a project and that's it. Right. That's all it was. Right. And the whole, oh, I, whatever I whisper to you in the bedroom, that was real. I don't think that's real either. Because just another lie. It's just, it's just a lie. And it's a line that means ultimately nothing mm-hmm. because it, I think Neil Abute is thinking he's pulling like a loss in translation here, but he's not. Sure. Like there's nothing. What could she possibly have said? That she's, oh, I'm allergic to peanuts. That was real. <laughs> I didn't lie about that. Uh-huh. But like, what the fuck could it be? So when we did the show, I won't tell you what I said. Okay. But- but when we when we did the show, me and the actor playing Adam like took time out of rehearsal to like, what do you think she said? And we came up with what she thought we thought she said. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I actually like whispered something into his ear, so it wasn't just. <laughs> 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 yeah. Wait, what, what 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 did what did you whisper? I can't tell you. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I know the one the one, the one thing we all want to know. We can't get it. Ugh. She's like she's like one day I'm gonna tell this story on a podcast and it's gonna make them angry. <laughs> no, it was something. No, it was I, I can't honestly I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, because that was like. Five million years ago. I think it was something along the lines of, I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended <laughs> no, We wanted it to be something that wasn't like super deep. The lemons are <laughs> spicy. We wanted it something that wasn't like super deep, but like might mean something to him because mm-hmm. she was talking about how she could tell that he hadn't had a lot of affection, intimate partners. Yeah. And so it was something to the effect of that, like it was good or she enjoyed it or she came or yeah. something along those lines. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Dick tastes seed yummy <laughs> oh, yeah. you're doing great champ <laughs> I, I did turn the volume up very loudly on my copy of the movie and she did whisper in his ear the human torch was denied a bank loan today. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i'm not sure what to do with my hands <laughs> it was nice to hear paul rudd say fuck you you heartless cunt Ooh. in a movie that yeah. was not not on my bingo card here yeah. <laughs> that's my new text message tone every time you guys text in the group chat <laughs> Nice. I hate to tell you guys this, but the screenplay for Quantumania just leaked, and Ant Man says that to <laughs> Kang, actually. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> we didn't talk about it, but all the quote unquote transitions between scenes in this movie uh-huh. is the worst butt rock you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> um, It's Elvis Costello. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. You, oh. you, you son of a fucking oh. bitch. There is Elvis Costello for a moment there, but like this ending credit scene here specifically, too, like. We just did not know how to pick ending credits music back in the odds, did we? Uh-huh. Because it's it's fucking awful. 
It's awful. I'm sorry. If even if even I disagree. If, even if this last song is Elvis Costello, it's terrible. Well, sorry. The, he, he. I mean, the, the, that's the consequence of putting out forty albums a year. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. You know what? In DC's defense, mm. he's being a cunt right now. <laughs> so. I, I like Elvis Costello as well. This music is awful in this movie. It's terrible. Sorry. I, I think that you're just in a place where you're not ready to receive Elvis Costello after, uh, after dealing I with- I like Elvis Costello. I know. I, <laughs> just giving you a hard time. Oh, oh um, man. I'm not going to begrudge someone just feeling like this movie is poison all around. Well, that was my last note of the movie was, what was the point? Uh -huh. What is the message? What am I supposed to take away from this? And the only thing I could come, come up with is art students are fucking the worst. Yeah, That's my I would one like <laughs> once again to stay on record mm -hmm. uh, I fucking hate art students mm -hmm. <laughs> also yes offense yes yeah I mean you can see why I picked it for the show it definitely fits for the show mm -hmm. 100% oh yeah it's uh I didn't, I didn't like this movie very much <laughs> like I just imagine Nathan opened the fucking schedule mm -hmm. saw that empty slot he's like I'm gonna fuck their whole world up that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> this was one of the first movies I put on the schedule for this season. So you would think- I'm gonna ruin these men's whole career. <laughs> <laughs> you would think at some point in the last four months, I would have checked to see if it was streaming anywhere. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, was, I, I was so like, cause I, I have a copy of it for just specifically for this show. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't feel like digging it out. I'll sure. just watch, watch it on streaming wherever. It's gotta be on HBO or even stars because this movie per, per, like played on stars a bunch. No, oh, right. nowhere, fucking Weird. nowhere. So, so strange. I'm sure it's probably in full on YouTube. I would not be surprised. <laughs> I will say, I sat down to watch it last night and it just wouldn't fucking play. <laughs> and there was a point, there was a fucking point where I was just like, it's not meant to be. I'm go I'm just going into this episode cold uh -huh. and just kind of just going to let them walk me through this fucking movie. It, it would be a very short episode though because like there's nothing to talk about. Like uh -huh. the plot I could not believe how long the plot synopsis was on Wikipedia. I'm like, this should be one <laughs> paragraph max. Sure. But yeah, that's the shape of things. Do we, is there anything else we wanted to discuss that we forgot to talk about or? No. <laughs> okay. Nathan, any final, final thoughts about the movie? Big recommendation. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, this was one that I, I'm glad to have revisited it because it's what, it, it's that kind of thing where you have to reckon with the media that you used to hold dear. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. This was a play that like, it was the first time I'd done a show outside of high school. And so I felt like, oh my God, I'm an adult actor now. Mm -hmm. and, in, and in a lot of ways, I will always have an affection for that experience if not the text itself sure. so I, it was i was glad to revisit it but uh it, i don't know that i'll ever watch this movie again no no same the, the, i'm gonna f i want to fly to florida next time nathan's in a show okay. you should. i gotta see it yeah. he's really good that's not me that's not me being a dick no. i actually want to see you act in something please do he's really good oh thanks you're welcome oh that seems biased it is. <laughs> it is. we we have been in like 50 million shows together we have that's true uh ashley any final thoughts on the show of things um i mean like nathan i have sort of like a complicated uh, complicated feelings about it because sure. when we when we did it uh in college it was the first time that i got cast in sort of a role like that where i wasn't you know the blonde blushing ingenue mm -hmm. so i thought i was really diving into something meaty and and watching it now it's just really silly yeah <laughs> but what do you think evelyn's favorite kind of doritos are oh, oh good, that's a question. good question we're back baby we're back we, we found a way back in <laughs> did you yeah, i mean come on did you guys think we weren't gonna <laughs> broach that subject? Come on, we now. found a way back in, baby. Don't you dare open Google, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Okay, let me just uh, delete, delete, delete. I don't know. She's probably like the most hated Dorito. Wow, player. your search history is wild. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to a lot of hip hop recently. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll say this. I'm deleting my copy, uh, my digital copy of this movie right after this episode. <laughs> I'm shocked I've never even heard of this. Yeah. I'm not. Not shocked that because this movie's not good, but- I'm not shocked at all. It's fucking big actors. It's fucking Rachel Vise. It's mm -hmm. Paul Rudd. Like, I'm, I don't know. Every time there's a movie put on the schedule by one of you two that I haven't heard of, I get so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending you guys photos of Ashley and I in the show. Oh, oh my okay. God. Okay. <laughs> One sec. Thank you. How old were you, Nathan? So then I'll know how old I was. 17, I think. Okay, so I was 18. 17 or 18, yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're definitely playing uh, Fred Weller's character. I see it. I can see. Is that a seashell necklace? Yes, sir, it is. Oh, oh, oh nice bro. Yeah, he's, he's wearing a puka <laughs> shell necklace. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, this, you fit perfectly. This is a good cast. Right click, save as. Yes. <laughs> can, uh, 
<laughs> can we share these when we drop the episode? I think that's fine. What do you think? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Oh, didn't see the second one. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Look at that strut. <laughs> <laughs> Mally, thoughts on... Uh, the shape of things i mean nathan looks good in these photos yeah, yeah that was uh f- what 16 17 years and uh, 100 pounds ago yeah. sorry, that jawline <laughs> is incredible thank you the, the guy that playing paul kind of looks like a young uh, adam savage <laughs> <laughs> so he was one of our acting teachers oh, so, okay yeah. wait the acting teacher fucking cast himself in the lead role. No, 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 no. He he had been our acting teacher. He wasn't our current acting teacher. Oh, okay. oh I was like that. <laughs> he was like no one else could play this performance. I was born <laughs> pretentious <laughs> son of a bitch. We did do that. There was a show we did where like the the professors cast themselves in the lead, and oh, I was like, what, what yes, are we, we doing did. here? We sure did. <laughs> Mally, final thoughts on the the shape of things? Did you miss? Did we miss anything? I already gave my final thoughts. Okay. Nathan looked good in that photo. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, terrible movie. <laughs> I, I truly did not. I don't know. I did not enjoy this. I did not gain anything from it. <laughs> I feel worse off having seen it now. But I'm good. I'm not. I'm not angry that I saw it. I just. I had a good time. Priscilla and I laughed our asses off to this. So, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's get into all of the fun stuff we could talk about mm-hmm. uh, here at the end. All of our usual ending segments. Let's get into. One of my favorites, Prop Cop. Uh, for new listeners, uh, Prop Cop is where we look at all the props in the movie we just talked about, and we uh, pick one each for ourselves to keep. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling I was kind of worried now <laughs> because you guys all mentioned the Jones Cream Soda because that was going to be mine, <laughs> but I'm actually going to go ahead and pick mine. I want the uh, the neon sign at the end in her art gallery that just says, she loves me not. Yeah. Oh, that was mine. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was mine. I say I don't think I don't think any of us picked the Joan Soto. <laughs> well, maybe maybe I'll let Ashley have that. I was gonna say I could make some great Tumblr photos with that neon <laughs> sign. Don't even worry about it. That, that'll be on the opposite wall from your hell here uh, uh-huh. neon <laughs> sign. Uh huh. Well, well, then you know I'll, I'll put that one back on the shelf. I'm gonna I am gonna take the Jones Cream Soda then. <laughs> you do it. Love you it. You do it. You son of a bitch. I need it. <laughs> that juice. Juice. Uh, Ashley, you're our guest. So you want the sign? I love the sign. Okay. It's like the one thing I love in the movie is that sign. <laughs> great. All uh-huh. right. <laughs> Uh, Nathan? In Evelyn's apartment, there is a big W with candles what? in it. Candles on it, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed that. And which I assume stands for vice. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna, uh, I want that, and then I'm gonna saw off uh, one part of it so it's an in with oh. candles. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right. Uh, Mally, is there a prop left over that you want? Uh, yeah, Philip sunglasses so I can immediately throw them in the fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't go with a reversible jacket, I'm gonna be honest. Nah, some, I mean, you know, you, I, you can't own perfection. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do love that line where she goes, Phil, you don't actually need to wear sunglasses inside. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure I screamed thank you <laughs> when she said that. I'm gonna be surprised if we have any for this, but mm. should we discuss bit part? I have two <laughs> options. Wow, I'm surprised. I had zero because there was nothing available but please please go ahead uh okay so there's a guy with some uh sick mutton chops sitting behind phil in the gallery Ooh. at the end of That's the movie who i picked okay. <laughs> okay. jesus nathan okay. <laughs> Incredible. Well, I'm assuming only one of you can grow mutton chops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's not the one you think. <laughs> um, and uh, my my alternate was uh, whenever Evelyn pulls the curtain down and it's the picture of like chunky Adam on the other side. Oh my God, yeah. It cuts back to Adam and there's this girl behind him who yes. points at him and looks off screen. I know, saying, I know what you're talking about. She's yeah. saying, look, it's that fucking guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's this fucking guy right here. Look at that. Uh, did anyone have any other bit parts? Because I literally had nothing. No. Nah, I don't want to be in this fucking movie yeah. next. <laughs> yeah. Mine was mutton chops. You guys can be the uh, receptionist of the doctor's office okay. who has to watch them try to sneak away to have sex. <laughs> I, I watched them, A, make out on the couch, then B, Paul Rudd almost take his dick out in the corner. <laughs> mm. like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, okay. Well, how about we talk about the whole reason uh, for the season, the whole point of the show, mm-hmm. the silver linings to the shape of things. Who would like to go first? I go. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Jenny doesn't have to marry Phil anymore. Yeah. Mm. Underwater. Really, Nathan? That's mine too. Oh no! <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> that was the first one I wrote down. Well, Adam doesn't have to go underwater anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! That was the first one I wrote down too. Is Fred and Gretchen broke up, and honestly, good. Yeah. They should have. Doesn't have to marry him anymore. But the silver lining I'll go with here is that uh, Paul Rudd dodged a huge fucking bullet. True. With that proposal not working out. So. True. And also, he looks great. He's probably. 
probably gonna, you know, get somebody else real. Still bounce back. He'll bounce back. He can definitely get some rebound. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he moves to another town and starts changes his name. Yeah. He's he's gonna move to Beverly Hills and date a stepsister. <laughs> <laughs> here's a here's a question though. Uh is he, is he in college? Um, yeah, he is. Oh. Yeah, he's an undergrad. Okay, oh. right? It, did they say that? Because we, we never see him in class. I'm like, why is he on campus all the time with these people? They mention a couple times he has to get to class. He is always telling other people to go to class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. No, he says he says occasionally I sit on a few English classes. Oh, what the right. fuck does that mean? In the, fr- in the very first scene, he's an Eng- he's being coy about being an English student. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Well, I would like to see him in class. People in a Neil Abute script can never just say I'm, I'm an, an English, English major. major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've been known to take a couple of English classes, m'lady. <laughs> I've been known to scribble a little bit on the page. Yeah. <laughs> Bally, do you have a silver lining? Uh, yeah. Evelyn probably failed because that was <laughs> not the fucking assignment. So you're saying uh, Rachel Weisz did not understand the assignment? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two out of ten. <laughs> Anything else? Before we get to uh, pick me up movies, I think I think we've we've plumbed as much positivity as we can from this. <laughs> gotcha. So let's say you watch this movie, and uh, like a couple of us here, you did not enjoy your time. <laughs> What's a movie that people can double feature with The Shape of Things uh, to kind of create a fair balance here? I'll go ahead and go. Mm-hmm. Uh, another movie uh, about uh, a relationship that is kind of toxic and doesn't really work out, mm-hmm. but. Still an enjoyable movie and has actually... The Mummy. (laughs) Has some uh, actual enjoyable moments, some self-awareness, some humor. I'm going to go with 500 Days of Summer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, what about you? Um, I went with a movie that Nathan already mentioned that Paul Rudd and Gretchen Muller in The Ten. The Ten, uh-huh. okay. I love that movie. I and I saw it um in a screening with David Wayne, and yeah, it's great. Go watch it. Okay. <laughs> weird, fucked up anthology movie. Yeah. All right. It's such a weird movie, but it's so funny. <laughs> okay. All right, Nathan, what about you? I also picked a David Wayne movie. Mm. Uh, they Came Together, a parody of romantic comedies starring Paul Rudd and Amy Poehler that uh, includes a sequence where Paul Rudd tries to fuck his own grandmother. Fun! <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Mally, what about you? Uh, I'm going to go with what I think might be my favorite Ryan Johnson film, mm. also starring Rachel Weisz, The Brothers Bloom. There oh, you go. Yeah, good choice. The only one of his movies I haven't seen, so I'll have to fix that. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, it's good. All right. I guess I have to ask, uh, do we recommend The Shape of Things, the movie? Get fucked. Yeah, I, had <laughs> I had a feeling. Yeah, I, I think you can pass on this one. If you're curious about the story, I maybe read the play. What story? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I, I think you're good. Uh, it's a worse version of She's All That. Nah. Well, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, exactly. I was about to say it's a fucked up version of Pygmalion, but She's All That is literally based on that. <laughs> See, we, we, we got to the same place. We just took different roads. <laughs> there you go. There you go. My recommendation. Nation is not on your fucking life. Uh-huh. Did you say recommend Nathan? No, I said recommend Jathan. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to speak hyperbole here a little bit, but I think I may have found a movie I hate more than Knock Knock. Wow. I know. This was awful. A movie I still haven't seen because <laughs> you guys have been edging me on Knock Knock. We're for- going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Don't worry about it. We're but- not going to. <laughs> I hate this movie. I hated it so much. I the only saving grace was Priscilla and I just having like a fun time laughing at it. Aww. Okay, would you would you rather rewatch this or Under the Cherry Moon? Ooh. <laughs> under the Cherry under the Moon. Cherry moon. Are you fucking under the me? Cherry Moon. Yeah, it's got to be Under the Cherry Moon. Which Nathan reminds me, I forgot to text you. Uh-huh. I found a children's book about Prince. Oh, Ooh. wow! And it's amazing. Are you sure it's not just the Little Prince? I was gonna say Little Prince. <laughs> no, I bought. So I. F- I went to, I took my nieces to some random store when I was in Indiana Mm -hmm. and it's this book series called Little People, Big Dreams. I got one about Prince, one about David Bowie and one about Bob Dylan. Wow. Interesting. Kids love Bob Dylan. They love him. Can't get enough of him. Uh, If I have a kid and it doesn't, I'm going to give it back. (laughs) Well, that's, that's all I've got. Uh, Listener, if you want to give us your feedback about the movie, The Shape of Things, you can. Mm -hmm. Don't. Yeah, don't, but you can. Uh, You can email us at thesilverlinesplayers at gmail.com or you can DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Mm-hmm. You can also follow us on those two plus TikTok to watch highlights from the show. And if you haven't already, please, we ask that you give us a rating on whatever uh, podcast platform you're listening to us on. Uh, give us some feedback there. Subscribe. All the good podcasts, roundup stuff. And lastly, we do have a subreddit with a whole plethora of information you can check out. Yeah. Uh, Reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And thanks for watching our TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, it's blown up. 
kind of overnight. We have a TikTok? We do, and it's, <laughs> it is doing numbers. Uh, so th- thank you, everybody, for yeah. that. That's that's really great. Huh. Yeah, that's that's all I've got for the shape of things. Uh, we've got one last bit of business here, fellas and lady, and that is, Mally, next week is your pick, and you've got to give us a clue for what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I would just like once again to apologize for not having a female's perspective on next week's episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just going to go ahead and get that out of the way right now. <laughs> We're getting back into some contentious territory, I mm-hmm. feel <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Ashley, you want to hang out for another episode? (laughs) (laughs) For a movie you haven't seen? I'm good. Yeah, we could really use uh, two extra letters at the beginning of next week's title that would really (laughs) help. Um, But that's okay. Uh, Ashley, thank you for coming on this episode. Thanks for having me. It's it's fine that you did watch the movie. We'll just give our opinions and then you tell us why we're wrong. (laughs) That actually would be an interesting experiment. Ashley, you stay on board. We'll just tell you what the movie is about and you can give us your thoughts. (laughs) Okay, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you for coming back on the show. Of course, uh, welcome back anytime. And Thanks for having me. This is not the last time we'll see you on this season. So no. I'm excited for that Fuck, episode. It's not. It's not. <laughs> We're getting back in Doritos. We're going back. Doritos 2. <laughs> Doritos 2. Back in the habit. Back in the habit. Doritos 2. I can <laughs> really, I really got to start checking the fucking schedule. For the <laughs> listeners, if you haven't listened to our Paranormal Activity episode, uh-huh. you'll get the references. Oh, it's a blast. It's a ton of fun. Also, uh, go check out Ashley's podcast, Southern Hearts. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, please plug all your, all your different shows and where to find them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you like spooky stuff um, and true crime, go listen to Southern Haunts. If you like scary movies, you can uh, hear me and Nathan on Oh, That's a Scary Movie. Which that title could mean anything. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was a scary watch for me because I didn't like it. I was uh-huh. like, oh, this is scary. I'm wasting my time. I had a midlife crisis. It's whatever we're scared of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you if, if you haven't gotten your fill of Neil of Butte on this episode, we're covering The Wicker Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Coming oh, episode of Oh, That's a Scary Movie. So enjoy. Check that out. And you can check out our season one episode. I think it's like episode like six oh, yeah. uh, the yeah. wicker man as well so before my time yeah in, in the pre jathan times yeah <laughs> that, that was back when me and dustin actually discussed the movie yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> cool is there any final notes before we get out of here for the week no no okay well uh thank you for tuning in everyone uh rest in peace oatmeal and as always fuck you you heartless guy. <laughs> <laughs> drink jones soda excelsior up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!